UFC Vegas 96. We return to the Apex after going halfway around the world to Perth. Back Vegas Apex. Uh, this you is went? a. I did it virtually. I went. Nice. How was it? Round trip. They are back. Nice. Mook style. Um, but yeah, this is a six fight main card. Okay. But for some reason, there's a TBA. Well, we know the reason. They haven't announced one of the fights yet. Yeah. I don't know what the UFC's doing in this, so we're going to just cover five fights right here. It's a weird way to promote a fight, is by just telling us half of it, and then the internet knows the other half. But yeah. whatever. Let's, we're going to move... We're going to ixnay that one. So we're going to do five fights. Uh, five fight in the main card. We'll give you five picks to compensate, so ten picks as usual. Yep. Uh, but Alex, let's jump into it. First fight, Edmund Shabazian, somehow still only 26 years old, taking on Gerald Mershat, the 36-year-old. Uh, Shabazian, 6-4 and four in the UFC, 13-4 and four overall. Mershat, 36 wins, 17 losses overall. 11 in the 9 UFC. Yep. Uh, 28 career submission wins. So, yep. Crazy from Mirshat. You're saying a bunch of things that I uh, I agree with because they're, they're facts. Uh, Shabazi in his last fight uh, got a round one uh, TKO. Mm-hmm. Mirshat, his last fight, a round two submission. So, both guys coming off of a win. Both guys before that uh, had two losses in a row. So, they had a nice rebound. They're trying to build a little momentum. We have the young guy in Shabazian who had a lot of hype when he first started. Yep, he did. Had a few losses, but if you look at who he lost to, he lost to some good guys. He did. Uh, he's trying to rebuild his career a little bit, but as I said, he's still only 26, so he's still like a baby in this. Yeah, he lost and, to Hermanson, Imavov, Derek Brunson, uh, Hernandez. And as a dude, when he lost to him, he was like 25 and under. Yeah, he's like 29 now, or 20, 26, 26 now. now. So it's like, that's not bad. And he's taking on an old guy, Mirshad. I mean, he's not that old. He's a guy who seems older than he is, too. 36. Bunch of Been in the UFC fights. for a long time. So Shabazian, he's coming into his 11th UFC fight, 6-4 and four in that time. But he's got two wins in his last five fights. So he's had a, a problem in his last five in adverse to the first five, right? Um, he's in both of his career decisions in the UFC, which is common because the competition is a big step up. As Gerald Mershart, he's got, you know, holes. It's obvious. He's won a lot of fights, but he's lost some he's fights. He's lost a lot of fights. You know, like, he's, he's a guy that even that, at 36, he's fighting all the time. You he know? is. He fights a lot. So He's one of the most active guys, honestly, in the UFC. Mershart is a plus 245 underdog, or underdog here. Yes. And Shabazian is at least... And my time of writing or time of recording right now, minus 310 favorite. So here's my problem. The golden boy, that's Shabazian, he defends 63% of his takedowns. But it seems like if you if you shoot you know, multiple times on him and you land a couple takedowns on him, you're getting the nod. You know, that's because while he doesn't... But you're not submitting him. You're knocking him out. See, Shabazian's been knocked out a few times. But he's taking on a guy who doesn't knock people out. Right. But Mearshart has elite wrestling. We know that because he's elite of the 28 submissions. submissions. I wouldn't say he has elite wrestling. He's not ragged on. All right, that's fine. He has elite submissions, 28 submission victories. But he's now, taking on a guy who doesn't get submitted. If you look at Shabazian's stats, three out of the four losses that he's had in his last five fights— in his whole career in the UFC, he's lost due not due to, but having to defend multiple takedowns and then the success, them successfully landing multiple takedowns. I think we pretty much know Mearshart's going to have some takedown success in this fight, given how dominant with the 28 submission victories in his career. As well, Shabazian is not great fighting southpaw opponents you know he's uh he's lost all of his fights alex you give me all these stats but what's the stat you always bring up in a fight like this age age difference right i i know the age difference and you're taking on a guy that doesn't get submitted Mm -hmm. uh he's a guy he's still learning and getting better whereas mirshat he's not getting worse but he's not getting better we know who mirshat is i'm gonna go with the youth i think shabazian's growing I don't think he gets submitted. Okay. I think Shabazian knocks Mirshad out because Mirshad has been known to get knocked out. Uh, I got Shabazian in this. I got the young guy. I 
gotta go with mirror shark gm3 i think gm3 is going to have success taking shabazian down and then even if he doesn't get the finish i think he'll win by decision at the very least so there we go first pick of the new season we disagree with i'm coming out swinging this season all right next pick another one just like this fight it's a young guy Taking on an old guy. We got Michael Morales, the 25-year-old Ecuadorian, 16-0, 4-0 in the UFC with two KOs. Taking on the vet, Haitian sensation Neil Magny. He's 37, 29 wins, 11 losses with a, get this, 22 career UFC wins. He's 22 and 10. Big, the, big, big, big odd difference. On big this odd difference, which I get Morales being a pretty sizable favorite, but I think the odds are a little ridiculous on this. Yeah, um, especially considering the the durability of Magni. Yeah, the experience factor in this. Yeah, I agree with you there. I do think Morales is going to win, but one of the things I agree. One of the things I've been just noticing, minus eight hundred, minus a thousand is crazy. Right. Do not bet on this fight. Well, one of the things I've been noticing about this fight is these fights, or not this fight, but these types of fights in general. Um, minus a thousand, minus fifteen hundred. These crazy odd stacks, even if it's short notice, a lot of times those fights go to the decision. Yes, I don't know why. It seems that everybody's like, "Oh, this is going to be a big, quick finish because of the odds." But I've noticed time and time again, almost even with the Tom Nolan fight with Herbert Burns last week. Well, that wasn't Herbert Burns. That was. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Reyes. Reyes. Yeah, that one went to the decision. But Herbert Burns almost went to the decision against Jack Jenkins. That was a big favorite. Went right at the beginning of the third round, but that fight almost didn't get stopped. I see this one, Michael Morales, winning by decision. I don't know why. It's a step up in competition, so you never know how that's going to go for him. And that, uh, that's got to be half of it. But a lot of the times, it's short-notice guys. I guess they're not being able to plan for. This isn't the case here. And Morales, after – I mean, he, his first two fights in the UFC were KOs, but his last two have been – unanimous decision win so i think that yeah, kind of tracks won, for that he won over uh what is it max griffin and jake matthews yes yeah Decisions i agree with there. you i agree with you though i think morales wins i think it's like going to be a good performance from him but i think it's going to be closer than his odds think and i think it's probably going to be a decision win over magny yeah i agree all right uh going to the next one this is going to be the first time i've heard of these guys well it's both guys first fight in the ufc ufc debuts ryan loader taking on Robert Valentin. Valentin, 10 and 3 with one no contest. As yep. I said, UFC debut. He has a five fight unbeaten streak. And he's taking on Loader, 33 years old, 6 and 1 overall. Uh, Coming in on a two fight U UFL win streak. Two fight win streak. Loader, his only loss was a split decision loss, so we don't know how those regional judges are. Valentin, as I said, 10 and 3. He has a loss each. Is there one anything like. The UFC, yeah, the judges, UFC judges, they're there. untrustworthy, and I don't know how to feel about that one loss. Exactly. Valentin, though, has a KO loss, he has a sub loss, and he has one decision loss, but he does have 10 wins. It seems, I'm going to be honest, I don't know a lot about these guys. Right. Looking at their stats, it seems like Lauder is more the striker with four career knockouts and no submission wins or losses. Yeah, I agree with Where Valentine that. is more the grappler where he has six submission wins, uh, but he does have three KO wins. So I think it's. it seems like... It's going to be a fight where it's stylistically it's going to be a guy that wants to stay on the feet versus a guy that he gets a lot of his wins on the ground. Yeah, I, I would actually – I would label Valentin as a dynamic finisher just because I don't know his exact style. I don't, and he does get KOs. Right. I don't want to say he goes – you know, he's going to be a heavy ground approach. Maybe in the regional circuit he swings on and they drop and then I mean, he his, subs him. His last four wins have all – yeah, exactly. We his last know. four wins have all been first round or second round finishes. So – I lean here with the slight favorite on the card, minus 170, Robert Valentin, Rob Zilla. I think Rob Zilla is going to come out. Uh, I think he's going to have what it takes here. Honestly, he's 4-0-1 across multiple regional circuits. I didn't want to name them all because it's like the LFL, other things like most people haven't heard of. Uh, both UFC debuts, like you said. Like I said, Valentin has more diverse finishes than his opponent Loader. So it seems. So it seems. Um, and he also holds the age and slight reach advantage. So all those things, as I usually do, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump on the Robert Valentin bandwagon on this one. I'm going Valentin, too. You know, you tried to make it sound like you knew what you were talking about. But let's be honest. We don't know anything about I this I did my fight. best with the stat sheet, brother. <laughs> I'm going with the stat sheet. I'm going with the Swiss. I like the Swiss guy. 
Valentin. He has cool tattoos, too. Yeah, he does. Uh, let's go with the women's strawweight division next. Co-main event. Co-main, Angela Overkill Hill taking on Baby Shark. Do, 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 do. Tabitha Ritchie. This is going to be a fun one. It's pretty much a toss-up on the odds, 110 on either side. You're not going to you know, get a plus odd. Or actually, you might have gotten a plus odd. Spoiler got, alert. Yes. Um, Angela Hill coming in 17 and 13, 5 KO wins, 1 sub win, 11 decision victories, been sub twice, and has been beaten 11 times on the scorecards. Tabitha Ritchie winning once by KO, 3 times by submission, and 6 times by decision. Losing once by KO and once by decision. This is going to be a very close match. And I'm going to bring up things that I talked about in the GM3 fight for this one, where takedowns are a big path to victory over one of the fighters. What do you have to say first? Huge age difference. 39 for Angela Hill, 29 for Tabitha Ritchie. Angela Hill's 12 and 13 in the UFC, but... She's won four out of her last five fights. So Isn't she seems, it so aggravating? She seems like she's <laughs> figuring something out. So shout out to her, including a second round finish in her uh, submission in her last fight. Shout out to her and her team. Shout yeah, out to her and her team. It's a great. As much as I'm a Angie, Angie Hill hater, she has won four out of her last five. That means I've lost four out of my last five picks. <laughs> <laughs> Tabitha Ritchie. Uh, She's coming off her last one. Was a, her last fight was a win, but it was a split decision win. Yep. She's five and two in the UFC, as you alluded to. She has a nice ground game, but it seems like Angela Hill, somehow at 39 years old, is evolving a little bit. Yep. Um, Angela Hill beat Lupe Godinez, where Tabitha Ritchie lost to Lupe Godinez. Fun fact. Um, th- this is this is an interesting one. Like you said, that I said, Ritchie has good ground game. And in multiple career losses of Angela Hill, in times where she was taken down, now we know in a lot of women's fights, number one, they go to the scorecards. That's just a fact. And, and Angela Hill's been there 22 times. And Angela Hill has been there more, I would say more than any female fighter in UFC history in her career. So, in multiple fights where she's been taken down multiple times, she's lost by decision or finish. Not many times by finish, we know that. But Tabitha Ritchie has great ground ground game. Shoots for takedowns often enough. I think if she can land a couple here, that is her clear path to victory. Stay on the pressure. Obviously, you want to get some striking in there because in order to get a takedown, not easier but more efficiently, you got to land on the feet because that's how you open it up. I agree. I think Ritchie... And I think Richie's going to win by decision. I think Hill is probably the better striker. So Richie just needs to stalemate in the striking. Yeah. As you said, show her something with the striking where she has to respect your striking. Get her to the ground. That's your best path to victory. And you I agree do with not you. Want Ange- I, I, you do not want Angela Hill at range. If Tabitha Richie doesn't get a takedown or like multiple takedowns, she's going to lose this fight, especially by decision. Uh, but I think she does. I think she figures it out. I agree with you, though. I think it's going to be a decision win, close decision win. I got Tabitha Ritchie winning. Let's go. We agree on that one. All right, let's go to the main event. The old man, Jared the Killer Gorilla, at 40 years old, still figuring it out. Still figuring it out. Still getting better despite his last two loss. Uh, Kyle Barajo. Not his last two, just his last fight. The natural, coming in 16-1. and one. Coming out, coming off of the murder of Paul Craig. The murder uh, of Paul Craig is a good way to say it. Uh, Barajo, 6-0 in the UFC. He's 16-1, as you said, but 6-0 in the UFC. Uh, Jared Cannonier, 10-7 and seven in the UFC. Mm-hmm. But again, that's been spanned across three weight divisions. Went right. heavyweight, light heavyweight, and I've kind of found his way at middleweight. Barajo uh, hasn't been beaten since 2015. He has a 15-fight winning streak, as you said. He Crazy. lost his second career fight and then hasn't lost since then. He can do it all. He can KO guys. He can submit guys. He can point you out, beat you on, on uh, the decision. Scorecards, yeah. Uh, he does only have two UFC finishes, a KO and a sub. But as I said, his last fight, I mean, it was a strike. He just outstruck Paul Craig, which yeah, that happens every fight to Paul Craig. No offense to him, but Paul Craig, his game plan is take just you down, catch you. choke you out. Not even take you down, just pull guard on you. Yeah, yeah. Get you close. Yeah. Uh, so this is another one where Big you know, age that age-old set where the age difference is probably going to be – not probably, but it just happens that way 64% of the time. Cannoneer 40, Barajo 31. Um, so Cannoneer against Southpaws is 4-2, and two, so he's lost a couple times, but he's won the majority of them. 
Uh, Baralho, unbeaten in a long time. Bunch of decision wins. Couple Baralho's, finishes. He's a guy where he's climbing the ranks. This yeah. is a win. Like he wins this fight. Kandemir is fifth ranked in middleweights. He'll be knocking on the door for a title shot. Exactly. If he wins this fight, he's at least in the question for a title shot. Probably yep. a fight or two away, but he's at least like, hey, what about him? For the now, while while we say he only has a couple finishes in the UFC, I'll argue that in the beginning of his UFC career, kind of nervous, figuring it out, you know, not throwing everything you got because it's a different it's a different thing than the regional circuit. Now that he's got some wins under his belt, he's opening up more. He's just started to get finishes. He's going to continue to open up. I think we're going to see and continue to see the best Cal Baralho, you know, or, or a better Cal Baralho than we've ever seen continuously for the next few fights. I agree with you. I think he's a guy getting better. Uh, he's, as you said, finding his groove in the UFC. Uh, he's knocking on the door of the title shot. You know, contender status, especially with the win here, and I think he continues it. I think Jared Cannonier, you know, he had a tough. He was losing the fight, and he was getting beat up. Right. But it was a tough stoppage. I think it was a little early stoppage in his last fight. But I think maybe not necessarily going opposite directions, but Barajo is on the ascent. Jared Cannonier, I think we've probably I seen the best. I think he's a fantastic gatekeeper for the division. He's a fantastic number five ranked fighter. Right. Uh, but I got Barajo winning. I think he gets a finish over Jared Cannonier. I think he continues his train. And I love Barajo, too, because he's the big, scary guy. But then he wears his glasses. The f- yeah, he's out of the fighting nerd camp. Yeah, I that, like it. Those guys are like 15 or 16 and 0, the whole camp. Yeah. There's g- five fighters, uh, Bruno Brazil, uh, Gene Silva, Barajo, and a couple of them are like 15 and 0 out of that fighting camp they're doing some impressive stuff being the nerd the nerd fighters or whatever they are yeah shout out fighting to nerds them. i think fighter nerds. The gym name uh, but yeah so i think we agree on that one i think we both got barajo yeah. cal barajo by finish i'd argue i'd probably say a knockout finish you know kind of double up on on that damage that emuvov did last time out but yeah check it out saturday night